In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Dear brothers and sisters in Christ, you could say this weekend is full of expectations. Last night's Duke-Syracuse men's basketball game has been hyped for months. It's going to be one of the best games of the season. They were already selling Beat Duke t-shirts three months ago. Looking forward to last night. So did it live up to all the expectations? Obviously here in Syracuse, it exceeded our expectations. And actually for quite a few people around the country, if you read news reports and articles about, about it, you would say people thought that the game was so great that it exceeded everyone's expectations. Except for maybe Duke fans. Of course, for the rest of the nation, what they're looking forward to is the Super Bowl game this evening. Whether you're a Seattle or a Denver fan or not, most of the people in our country, many people in our country, are going to be gathering with families and friends in front of TVs to watch, and with lots of munchies, lots of food, to watch a football game or the commercials. It's not surprising. In fact, last year, 108 million Americans watched the Super Bowl. It's not surprising that what, it, it, what one person recently said, that Super Bowl Sunday is the biggest American holiday since Abe Lincoln declared Thanksgiving Day a holiday back in the 1860s. The media hype has been in overdrive, especially the last couple of weeks. This is going to be the greatest Super Bowl in Super Bowl history. But it's a game. It's just as likely to be a big disappointment as it is to be a, a classic Super Bowl match. Perhaps the commercials won't live up to the hype. Perhaps the game will be a blowout or it'll be even boring. <coughs> like so much in our lives, when our expectations are high, we end up disappointed with the results. You think about that in other areas of life other than sporting events. A new job doesn't pan out, a relationship falls apart, a new car, a new home has problems. We look back on what turned out to be disappointment in our lives and we ask ourselves, what did you expect? What were expectations like when Joseph and Mary came to the temple with their seven-week-old son, Jesus? After all, the expectation for God's anointed was quite high. Everyone was expecting that the Messiah was going to roll into town at any time and throw off the oppression of the Romans. But things had calmed down some around Jerusalem. The census that the Romans had, had, had decreed for the whole empire that brought all these people to all these different places back to their hometowns, well, that census was over. They got the numbers they wanted and they were ready to tax the tax everyone. Most non-locals had gone home. There were no major festivals going on at the temple in Jerusalem. It was life as normal again, except for that poor Galilean couple who were coming into Jerusalem that day, who were coming uh, <coughs> with their son who was barely 40 days old. You see, they had been living in, in Bethlehem. They weren't able to go back up to Nazareth where they had originally lived. Some people might have some comments about the age of the child and so on. And they stayed down there. It was only 40 days after the <coughs> child had been born. And, and so they had to make this six-mile journey from Bethlehem to Jerusalem. Perhaps Joseph had a donkey for Mary and Jesus to ride on. But either way, it was still traveling six miles on rocky roads with an infant. Now, why were they traveling to Jerusalem? Why go through all that work? Well, being Old Testament believers, Joseph and Mary had to carry out the laws of the Old Testament, the laws that God had established through Moses. And one of those laws required that after four, about 40 days after the birth of a child, a sacrifice was to be made for a mother after she had fully recovered from, the ch from childbirth. They were to... To do this, 
uh, for her ceremonial to to carry out her ceremonial cleansing. Since this law applied to every family, the Lord also made the provision that for poorer families they could sacrifice two doves instead of two expensive lambs. They were also to consecrate their firstborn son for service to the Lord, or they had the option to, I guess you could say symbolically, buy him back for five shekels from the Lord. Joseph and Mary knew who their son was, and they knew his whole life was going to be devoted to service to the Lord, so they came to consecrate him then. So the day finally arrived. Mary was going to be purified. Jesus would be presented to God, consecrated for his service. No one really paid attention when Joseph and Mary and the baby came into the temple courts. They looked like any other poor family that came in every day to make that sacrifice of purification and the presentation of their firstborn son. Joseph carried, probably carried a small cage of, with a couple doves inside as he guided the, the donkey that, Mary, that carried his family. When they woke up that morning, though, what were their expectations? Well, we have to get up early to make the six-mile walk to Jerusalem. We have to make sure we purchase the doves for the sacrifice. And, of course, we have to make sure we fulfill the law's requirements. And maybe if we get all that done and things aren't too busy in the temple, we might be able to get home before sundown. Now Mary and Joseph knew who their child was. There was no doubt of that, especially after angel appearances where the Lord, through angels, the Lord had told them who this child was going to be, the Son of the Most High, the one who was going to be named Jesus because he was going to save his people from their sins. There was no doubt about who their child was after shepherds had come to worship their <coughs> newborn son in the stable on the, day he was, on, the, on the day he was born. Yet Mary and Joseph's expectations probably weren't very high on that day. They were probably quite practical at that moment. Not unlike the expectations of any new parents dealing, learning how to live with a newborn. But there was another in that city whose expectations were sky high that day. In the city of Jerusalem, an older man by the name of Simeon lived. He was a righteous and devoted follower of the true God. He was waiting for the consolation of Israel. Like other Old Testament believers, he didn't know when the Messiah was going to come, he, he, but he wanted and longed to see the Messiah. But this Simeon, he had an advantage over other believers. The Holy Spirit had revealed that he would not die before he had seen the Lord's Christ. Think about that. What a promise. What a reason for expectation. Every day he'd go to the temple courts. Every day he looked forward. Maybe today is going to be the day I'm going to see my Lord. I'm going to see the God's anointed one come to save. And every day he went back home not having seen him yet. Until this day. Somehow the Holy Spirit revealed or let Simeon know that it was time to meet the Christ. Imagine how his expectations soared at that moment. Finally, finally, after all these years, finally I'm going to see the Savior. I'm going to see the Messiah. I'm going to see my deliverance, my salvation, my Lord and my God. You know, there was another person that day who also had expectations on her way to the temple. An elderly prophetess by the name of Anna had expectations that day. She was 84 years old. She could trace her family line all the way back to Jacob's son, Asher. At one time, she had been married for about seven years, but then her husband had died, and then as a widow, she never left the temple, but worshipped night and day, fasting and praying. There were lots and lots of rooms in the temple complex, and so there's a real possibility that she may have even had a room in the temple complex where she slept at night. She was simply happy to see another new day of God's grace and to have another opportunity to worship and praise and pray to her, to her God a day filled with all those things for her. She was looking forward to that day. All kinds of expectations were going to meet there in the temple courts on that day 40 days after Christmas. Only old Simeon knew 
how high their expectations should be, but even he didn't realize how an infant would utterly, utterly exceed every one of their expectations. When Mary and Joseph entered the temple court, they didn't expect to have a very eager, very energetic older man come rushing up to them and take their child right out of Mary's arms. By God's grace, their parental instincts didn't kick in. Because they saw him do the unexpected. Simeon cradled that bundle of divinity in his arms. And he sang an ancient song. Sovereign Lord, as you have promised, you now dismiss your servant in peace. For my eyes have seen your salvation, which you have prepared in the sight of all people. A light for revelation to the Gentiles and for glory to your people Israel. As Simeon cradled the Son of God in his arms, he knew that this child staring up at him was his Savior, and the Savior of all people. Not just the Israelites, not just his fellow Jews, but all people, all nations. His Savior had come. The Lord's long-promised anointed was there in his <coughs> arms. One of the few people who ever had a chance to do that. And now he could go home to heaven. God had fulfilled his promise to him. All of Simeon's expectations were blown away with pure joy and peace. All Mary and Joseph could do was stand there in wonder and amazement. All their practical expectations were set aside as they, as they were reminded once again who their child really was. Simeon came up to them and blessed them and said to Mary, his mother, This child is destined to cause the falling and rising of many in Israel and to be a sign that will be spoken against, so that the thoughts of many hearts will be revealed, and a sword will pierce your own soul too. Their little boy would be so influential in the lives of people that many would reject him and many would be led to trust in him. And those who reject him would also go oppose him violently. <clears throat> a time would come when Mary would grieve for her child, when she would feel that, that pain of grief for him. Thirty years later, she would stand beneath the cross and see her son there crucified, bleeding, dying. Yet even then, her Savior too. Simeon handed the little boy back to his mother and departed in peace. But elderly Anna... And seen all this happen here in the temple courts. She had seen and heard Simeon rejoicing with, with so much expectation and joy. And, and she realized that today wouldn't just be a good day to worship the Lord, but the best day in her long life. So coming up to them, at that very moment, she gave thanks to God. For decades, she had come to the temple courts. She had worshipped the Lord. She had marveled at His grace but today was different because the Lord had allowed her to see her Lord, her Savior in the flesh. And so she did what we all do with good news. She told everyone about it. We're told she spoke about the child to all who were looking forward to the redemption of Jerusalem. Her expectations were blown away with joy. Mary and Joseph weren't the same as they fulfilled all everything required by the law of the Lord. No. The day wasn't the same anymore. That day was, all their expectations were just blown away. What a day of joy it had been for them as they carried their son, their Savior, back home. What were your expectations when you came to church this morning? Were your expectations, do you have high expectations like Simeon as you got yourself ready today? Were you excited because you were going to see Jesus today? You were going to, to, to meet him in word and sacrament. He was going to be here and you're going to see him. Or did you have different expectations like Anna? Happy that God gave you another day of grace and another opportunity to come to God's house to worship him. Praise Him, to offer your prayers to Him? Or did you maybe have practical expectations like, like Joseph and Mary? Happy to be here. But perhaps maybe a little too focused on the practical 
worried about how we're going to get here, what, what, when, or, uh, getting through the service today, getting home after today, everything that's got to go on, or were your expectations even lower? Doing what you got to do, and then hoping that pastor hurries up with his sermon so you can go home and get ready for the hours of pregame for the Super Bowl. We all have different expectations. We have different expectations of what God has for us and how we, we hope to do, or what we hope to do in His service. <clears throat> what expectations do you have for a church like ours? What expectations do you have for worship? What expectations do you have for our God, for our Savior, Jesus Christ? Far too often these expectations are low and they're self-centered. What's this church or this worship service or this sermon or even God going to do for me? What am I going to get out of it? Will they do what I expect? When our expectations are so self-centered, so inward focused on what I want, well, you're setting yourself up for disappointment. Yet what do you find when you come to God's house? When you come to worship? When you come to the Lord's table? When you read God's word? Well, like Simeon and Anna and Eve and Mary and Joseph, you find Jesus. You find the Lord's anointed. You find the one presented to the holy God to serve in your place. You find the one who came to fulfill all of God's holy law, even as an infant, in your place. <coughs> you find the one who came to sacrifice himself for you, the one who came to save you. In spite of our self-centered, low expectations, we find Jesus who exceeds even the highest expectation. We find Christ in His Word, fulfilling each and every promise, saving sinners, you and me, from an eternity in hell. We find Jesus in His Supper, forgiving our sins and giving life. We find Jesus giving us peace and forgiveness <coughs> and comfort and eternal salvation. We find the fulfiller of all of our expectations. We find the consolation and comfort of our God. We find the Savior of the nations. And our Savior too. And we find the Lord of our lives. We find the one who changes our lives. Who motivates us to serve Him. To speak about Him to others. Who purifies us of all of our sins. Who never lets us down. Who never disappoints us. Who never breaks a promise. We find the long expected Jesus come for us. So in this weekend, this day full of expectation, no matter who you cheer for or what you hope to see and do today, go with Mary and Joseph to God's house. Rejoice with Simeon in the presence of your Savior and then depart in peace, eager to share the good news of your Savior like Anna with everyone you know and love. For the long-expected Savior has come for you and He has come for us all. Amen.